Howdy, everyone. My name's Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. For those of you not in the know, we're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On every episode of the podcast, a few of the folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 show submissions we've gotten. Why? Because we're looking for something we like to call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. Then, they'll need to pick out the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get this show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today, starting with Max, who is back in the game. Hey, hey, headliners, headliners, headlinees, if you will. We also have Jesse. Yeah, we do. We've got Christy. Um, I got so lost. I was going to say, hello, Hedies. But now I'm just like, everything's cringe. And I, I'm... No, we can... A... Hedies is fine. We can do a Flaming Lips, <laughs> Hedy Fwens. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we have Oliver. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here. That's not cringe at all. <laughs> yeah, Christy. Cringe is so 2023. It's the year that we are in for like another week. <laughs> Cringe is something that millennials say thinking they sound younger, but I don't think it's going to last. Yeah. I don't think cringe will make it to 2024. I'm saying it from now. Much it's like our you. This too shall pass. <laughs> what, what was that, Alyssa? It's what? It, it's Chugi. Chugi, that's right. Chugi? That yes. sounds like something that you'd like it's like a dog treat brand. It sounds like a it's it's like a sneeze almost. It's it's also spelled really weird. It's like C H E U or U E G Y. Sure. <laughs> to quote Grandpa Simpson, I knew what it was yeah. once, and then they changed what it was, and that's where I'm at right now. And also, we have Pratik returning to the show after his monumentous first appearance last week. Hey everyone. And who could forget Alyssa? our podcast producer who has a little message for everyone at home. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. It would be really bad if I was wrong, but I could be. No, 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 you are not wrong. You are very, very much correct in that. So without ado, let's talk about clips, specifically AI clips. With Make, our AI can automatically clip your podcast and ensure clips are both optimized per platform and optimized for engagement on the listener side. We'll even give you up to 10 clips to choose from. Clips are an easy, effective asset that you can share with your followers, listeners, and friends to help better market your podcast. They really work too. Our very own PodPod clips have even reached over 6,000 ears in the past 90 days just on Instagram and TikTok alone. To get started with clips, simply visit make.headliner.app, click automatic audiograms, and let Headliner do the rest. You heard it here, folks. And with that out of the way, we can jump right into the game, starting with Max. So you know how this works, Max. You cover your eyes or don't, and then pretend you did. I don't know at this point. Um, and we listen to a clip. All right, let's do it. I'm ready to lose. Hopefully win like that one time I did. But that was, I think, a very rare occurrence, a fluke, if you will. I feel like everyone is starting to figure out Alyssa and I's like rhythms for this game. So I don't know, like last week, everyone put up a decent fight, but no one noticed that the correct answer was always the third one. So who knows? To say, Eddie did pick up on Max's Triumph, though. Shout out to the Max's Triumph episode title. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Eddie has my back, but that's because I designed Eddie. So I snuck in some some bias towards myself. Yeah, All Eddie suggestions, all the AI suggestions, they actually subtly include things about me. So I'm, I don't know if anybody's picked up on that, but a little Easter egg I hid. If you ever see like a show note suggestion that's like, also oh, Max is awesome. That was me. It's like an acrostic where like if you take the first letter of every line, it spells out Max is awesome every time, doesn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about, but <laughs> you know, like when you're in it, when people hide messages in a newspaper and it's like, yeah, every, the first letter of every sentence spells a word. Oh yeah. yeah I watched the, yeah. I watched the Unabomber documentary. <laughs> so you're <laughs> Not saying where I got it from, but 
showing signs of Unabomber like like uh, Unabomber like traits, and I should be worried and consult a psychiatrist. It's noted. No, no, not not that. Let's get this clip over and done yep. with before I just dig myself into a bigger hole. Okay, close your eyes. What I discovered was mind blowing. With each passing phase of my life, certain gifts in terms of knowledge and strength made me learn a lot more about myself, which I feel compelled to pass on. From an idyllic upbringing in a multicultural Calcutta, which fed my non-judgment, empathy, and inclusiveness impulse, to the rough and tumble of boarding school, I challenged the limitations to self-realization, masculinity, and identity to a thriving career in TV news and a master's degree that blew the lid on my communication and leadership skills. Coming out, the loss of a parent and final tryst with entrepreneurship, which brings me to this stage of pursuing personal and professional mastery. Well, enough about me. This is really about you. Over the course of the next few episodes, I bring to you events and people who left a profound impact. Okay. Was that so the trailer? We... That was like too perfectly cut. So I can say from now, if you want to know the episode title, because it won't give anything away, it was in fact the trailer for season six. Got it. Because I was going to say, it seemed like too perfect to clip, which I was going to give, you know, hats off to to Headliner for cutting it like that. But now I feel like maybe it was the trailer. So, well, we are just that I... good. I will actually interject. The actual trailer is like three, four minutes long. So the hmm. clipping AI was actually pretty decent that time. Yeah, that was a nice, that was a very perfectly cut clip. So good on, good one headliner. Nice. Okay. On that note, let's see if you can get the title of the show from that clip. Your first option is Live and Learn with Shivraji Parshad. Number two. Live, laugh, learn with Shivraji Prashad. And number three, living and listening with Shivraji Prashad. This is like, you just gave me the same title in like three slightly different variations. So I feel like there's no, there's not really yet one of them is correct. To, you, one of them's <laughs> correct. There's nothing I can do to deduce them. It's just like how, what synonym did you want to use? And, he did this to me last week. Yeah, so I'm just going to go with the third one just because lucky number. And I actually like that one the most, but no idea. Just roll the dice. Okay. Unfortunately, it was not living and listening with Shivraji Parshad. It was live and learn with Shivraji Parshad. I get a nickel every time I repeat Yo. his name, by the way. What is he living and doing? He's He's learning, but he's also listening. So, you know. It's just like we're splitting hairs here, <laughs> but I'll I'll take the L. Well, thank you for being a, a good loser about it, Max. Sounds Here's like a, a little nice bit podcast, about this. It does. It sounds like a very good podcast, and I'm still kind of fixated on how good the clip was. So here's our okay. show description. As I said earlier, this was the season six trailer we just listened to. Welcome to season six with me, Shivraj Prashad. As a coach, mentor, and media educator, this becomes a powerful medium for me to speak to you about events, ideas, and people who left a profound impact on me and therefore can make a world difference to you. I was recently asked to re-examine my 50 years of life on Earth as a perfectly written novel. What I discovered was mind-blowing. With each passing phase of my life, certain gifts in terms of knowledge and strengths made me want to learn more about myself, which I feel compelled to pass on. Over the next few episodes, I will either be talking to you about or interviewing folks whose insights and collective wisdom will definitely give you more to learn as you listen along. And if for some reason you need that safe and trusted space to fully explore and unlock your own potential, I'm always here for you. Just write to me on shivraj at brevis.in or search for me across social media to block my time to just talk. So there you have it. Nice. Also, designer shout out to the cover art. Beautiful typeface. I love a good ampersand. So another thing I wanted to highlight about this podcast, doing it right. Yeah, it's definitely some good, some good podcast art. I love the use of negative space on the title. It's just an overpowering blue sky. 
with, you know, nice little Dutch angle on the what looks like a bridge of some kind with him on it. So very cool stuff. Very pleased with it. Moving on to our second clip for the day. Jesse, would you like to cover your eyes? Yeah, I got this little Christmas tree. I'll pretend it covers it. <laughs> You're being festive. She's got a, a list written in her own blood of everyone she's ever slept with. They're all going to find themselves in hideous accidents at some point. Yeah. Um, okay, no, but my point is, at some point, yeah. you weren't friends, right? And you say that you fancied her from the beginning. Okay, so, no. So what happened with this one was, to tell you the honest truth, I was in a long-distance relationship, and it was going south, it was sort of wobbling, and it was I was I was not in a good place, and it was it was messy. And this girl that I also liked and and I slept together, and I was in the middle of that, and it wasn't great because it was I wasn't it, in the right time. place. Yeah, yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And then it and but because because of that, I felt like it was done. But I was still wanted it to be something that we had, you know, okay. something, more, something more innocent almost. Okay. So there was your clip. And here are your three options. Number one, Crushed by Margaret Caborn Smith. Two, My Life is a Rom-Com by Margaret Caborn Smith. And number three, Hallmark Lies by Margaret Caborn Smith. What was the last part of that one? Hallmark lies? Yes. Or lies. <laughs> Hallmark lies. I'm implied I'm implying that they mean fibbing, lying, lies. not being truthful. Not I could, I didn't lying know if down. you I didn't know if it was like Hallmark like false false statements or if it was Hallmark days of our lives with a V. Oh, okay. I thought you meant lies like lying down. And I was like what a peculiar okay all right all right so first off surprise surprise the long distance relationship didn't work whenever you were cheating on her so just gonna just gonna just all right there that's to the guest however back to the title so we got crushed my life is a rom-com and hallmark lies i'm thinking it's number two my life is a rom-com i think it fits them they were using words like fancy Whenever they were talking about having a crush on someone. So I don't think it's going to be crushed. And it mm -hmm. both sounds like they use a similar dialect. And so if fancy is the word they're using there. I don't think they would name the podcast crushed. And Hallmark sounds like a very American thing. So I'm going to go number two. My life is a rom-com. Okay. Duly noted. I kind of agree with you personally, if I can be impartial for the guest, I'm imagining a Hugh Grant type saying that those lines. So sure. My life as a rom com is also incorrect. the hideous accident part at the beginning. Is this like how, what was that about? How what are you going to do to these people? I guess you'll have to listen to the episode to find out. Which was not, by the way, the show was not called My Life as a Rom Com. It is Crushed, the first choice. Oh well, so sorry. The episode in question was from an episode entitled David Reed, which I'm assuming is the name of the guest. And here is the show description. Crushed by Margaret Caborn Smith, a podcast about the joy slash horror of unrequited love, celebrating crushes and unrequited loves in all their intense and embarrassing glory. Margaret Caborn Smith chats to funny people like Sarah Pascoe, Rachel Paris, and Rosie Jones about the crushes they can't forget. And there you have it. I really liked the artwork for that episode, by the way, that show. Just sucker for a good, like, dark blue gradient in the background and... It plays really well with like the font choice and, you know, the giant heart that Margaret is holding. I'm assuming that's Margaret. I can only guess. But good stuff. Kind of reminds me of a Smashing Pumpkins cover, but that's just the way my brain works. Moving on to our third clip. Christy, are you ready? Let's go. All right, cool. They grabbed Jamie, slipped on the blood that was on the floor from Denise, and he dragged her, dragged Jamie out of the house and into the boot of his car. So, and I'm assuming that's why the dog didn't get the scent because I'm assuming that he cat like he must have carried her and then put her in the car, so the dogs wouldn't have picked her up. Mm -hmm. no. I think they'd have 
sent from her before from her obviously coming and going but I, I don't know so he took away his mask and he started driving away but not even a minute later he had to slow down because of the police responding to Denise's oh, 911 call yeah. so he slowed down to let them pass right, okay. um, Jamie could hear the sirens and she probably had hope for all of yeah. a couple of seconds but at this point the the um, the police they didn't have any idea what the nine one one call was about because no. Denise hadn't been able to speak. Ah, exactly. So they didn't know that so, she away. So they wouldn't wouldn't have known to be stopping anybody. No, no. But Jake, Jake did say later that he was prepared for a fight. Okay. There's your clip, Christy. And here are your options for titles. Number one, crime divers. Number two, diving into crime. And number three, Sis Spill the Tea, a true crime pod. I'm going to go with one, Crime Divers, just because I hmm. think it's kind of tight. I, I like that. I All I know is that they recorded that in the smallest kitchen in Glasgow. <laughs> one Specifically <million> Glasgow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Just uh, wanted to make sure. Yes. It, actually... Let's do the last one. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna lock in the last option. You sure? Yes. Hmm. Is there is there a reason for that? Um, I am. It's I. I feel like that answer. I always go with my gut. I need to stop doing that hmm. and go with the one that I feel like is the least likely. And I mm -hmm. thought that would be the least likely. And is the instinct you're having to not trust your gut coming from your gut, perchance? It's coming from everywhere, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll stop grilling you. Number three, <laughs> Sis Spill the Tea, was unfortunately incorrect. It was actually Crime Divers. No! I'll never get it right. So sorry to disappoint you. No, I'm In my defense, myself. I tried to nudge you back. I'm just, I'm just always disappointing myself. It's okay. <laughs> well, now I'm sad. I, that, <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Your gut was kind of right because it said that was the least likely to be it. And it was not it. So I know yeah. I was still, uh, man, there was no winning. I mean, somehow <laughs> you had to trust your gut and it failed you somehow. <laughs> it still fails me. I, I don't have any strategy for this. I've tried lots of different things and nothing works. <laughs> One of these days. That's all I'll One say. One of these days I'll figure it out. Yeah. So that was Crime Divers. The episode in question was Two Murders, One Abduction. And buckle up, everybody, because we got a heck of a show description to get through. Hi. Welcome to Crime Divers, where two Scottish sisters dive into true crime. That's it. That's the description. I hope you buckled up for it. Yeah. <laughs> very good art, as usual. It's very minimal, which is, I mean, it's a true crime show, so I think you probably want something a little minimal for the cover. That could just be me. And pretty happy with it. Unless anyone has any thoughts on the show or the artwork they'd like to share, we can jump right into our next clip for Oliver. All right, Oliver, I think you got to cover your eyes now. All right. Happy to be here, Nicholas. Let's do this. Yay. <laughs> I'm curious. I've heard many therapists actually state that the body is the unconscious mind. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's interesting. I had never thought about that perspective, like specifically... You know, we look at the subconscious all the time and how it can drive things that we think we're not aware of and how can we become more aware of that. And, you know, you, I'm sure you hear people talk about how can we impact the subconscious to get more in alignment with what we want to be in the world or how we want to live, you know, kind of from an ontological point of view. What's the quality of my being? If I can communicate with the subconscious, then that can, you know, impact the way I show up in the world. But this unconscious part is interesting. Like, the idea that the body is that. Yes, a manifestation of it. I have a little issue with that thought, though, and it has to do really with our human tendency to judge. Okay. 
That was a really good endpoint for a clip, if I do say so myself. Fantastic. Yeah, truly. Also really love when a guest starts their reply by saying that's really interesting. And I don't mean that ironically or like as a put down. It genuinely is great because it makes me go, was it? And then I just kind of like think about it for a minute. So love that clip. Here are your options for today, Oliver. Number one, exploring the mystical side of life. Number two, spirit seeker. And number three, mystical, whimsical pod. Well, let me first say, if I don't mind, can I ask the other contestants, did you all notice, is everyone getting the same? Is it always B? Is it always A? Is it always C this week? I don't think so. <clears throat> I was trying to pay attention to that, but I kind of lost track, but I'm pretty sure it's not the same um, one for everyone. Mm -hmm. Nicholas, can I hear those options again, please? Yeah, sure. And I'll do you one solid. I'll even scramble the order they're in. Oh. Number one, Spirit Seeker. Number two, sorry, I'm trying to pick another one without just reading Spirit Seeker twice. Number two, Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. And number three, Mystical Whimsical Pod. Well, I have a very good idea which one it is. Because I generally think whatever thought is in my head is correct in that moment, even if it's not correct. So, this is the one that spoke to my subconscious. And that would be Spirit Seeker. Okay. Was there anything about it that jumped out at you? Well, no. Okay. Very good. Unfortunately, Spirit Seeker was incorrect, as was Mystical Whimsical Pod. It was actually exploring the mystical side of life. Wow. Yeah, so sorry. You're not sorry. A little bit. I mean, you know. <laughs> You are the the sorry. correct amount of You're not regret. sorry. Let's... I'm not sorry. I'll admit it. <laughs> Alyssa could be blunt. So this clip was from the episode "Do Your Judgments Serve You," and here's a little bit about the show. Come explore the mystical side of life with Linda Lang, intuitive healer and guide. Embark on a journey of discovery with Linda and her amazing guests as they explore the secrets of the universe and unlock the power of your own inner wisdom for seasoned spiritual seekers and those starting to explore. So, neat. Not the kind of podcast I personally listen to, but I, I found the clip really interesting. There was a sort of Alan Wattsy, we are the universe experiencing itselfness to it, and that's cute. That's fun. So, neat. Jumping into our next clip. Pratik, are you ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> Close my eyes. Okie doke. Mr. Lindsay was like, it was like, you, we did set pieces and who to pick up. And it was always about how we played. Wow. And that's all that, you know, not, not all he was bothered with, but that's all he like, he let, led us to believe, you know, he would be going through everything. So yeah, and it's, it's interesting that, you know, like he started doing that, like through the game, you know, the game ended up in a draw. So mm. like, at what stage do you like decide that? You know, that you're going to start, start thinking of the next game during that game that you could lose. Yeah. If that doesn't go right, do you know what I mean? It's so it's, unique. It's, it's such a unique approach. Yeah. And there was a record broken, wasn't there? I mean, it's Villa Park now that's the stadium that no one wants to go to this season. Yeah. At 15, 15 wins in a row. Is it 15 straight wins? 15 and, yeah, wins in a row. Yeah, and it's a new record at the club. Yeah, and that's, that's a noisy place that, you know... I've been there, I've played there, I've slid it Arsenal. Okay. There was our clip. And here are your options for today, Pratik. Number one, Seaman Says. Number two, Arsenal Squad. And number three, Pressure Pod with David Seaman. Well, I definitely think it's about <clears throat> football, or as we like to call it, soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only one that I am familiar with is the Arsenal one. So I'm just going to go with that. 
Okay. No logic behind it, but let's uh, let's be, I guess. Yes, that was the second option, Arsenal squad. And you'd think you'd be correct based off the episode title, which is Arsenal fall to Villa and Bournemouth to Villa and Bournemouth humiliate Man United. But no, it it actually was Seaman says. So, so sorry. Nice try, everybody. I think, did anyone get one right today? Christy almost did. That that counts for something. Yeah, that's right. We do have one more after this. So interesting. Let's find out a little bit about this show before we have you all work together. David Seaman is joined by his former manager, one of the all-time greats, Arsene Wenger. In the chat, they discuss Arsene Arsenal's career, what he thought of the team when he arrived, the transformation of the club's culture when he took over, his title-winning seasons, his new role with FIFA, the current Arsenal squad, and also Mikel Arteta. In part two, Arsene talks about Arsenal this season and their title chances, his new role with FIFA, players he almost signed, and his thoughts on the move from Highbury to the Emirates Stadium. There you go. I don't know if any of you guys are soccer fans, but cool stuff. Moving on. Alyssa and I thought it would be really fun to put you all on a a little team together to answer one more question as a group. So if everyone could cover their eyes, please, and be sure to listen closely. I will say this one is a little bit quiet, so it's at full volume, so just listen. Okay, everyone, eyes closed. Et euh, dans ce podcast, je m'appelle à faire parvenir les messages que je reçois et à vous expliquer comment les adapter à votre vie au quotidien. Je viens de la sortir, celle-là. <rire> Mais c'est... OK. There was your clip. Did everyone get that? I hope you took notes. It was fun to hear the word podcast, but in a French accent. <laughs> Might have been the only English word in there. All I heard was French in there. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, in case nobody noticed, that clip was not in English. It was in French. So that's going to make this very bleh. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be pretty interesting. Here are your three choices. Number one, ask ladies. That's GW ladies. Are you translating these like the title's not in French? No, they're, these are the titles as they're written. So the title's in English, but the podcast is in French? I suppose so. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Number two, ask Gladys. And number three, ask Genevieve. I can already see Christy die a little inside from the title patterns. (laughs) Is the last name actually pronounced Genevieve? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna say yeah. we choose the last one as the only thing French about yeah. anything. That sounds I like Gladys, I think Gladys is also a French name for what it's oh, worth. Really? I think like, they're I think all French. French. Yeah. I Googled yeah. them all. They are oh. all French. Oh my god. Very French, though. So With Gladys, Gladys, Genevieve, and who? Gladys, Genevieve, and Gladys. GW ladies, whatever. Oh, this you know. is so on this is this is who did this? I'm voting for Genevieve, guys. That's the yeah, most I have, name. I'm going to get to the bottom of this after this question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to march straight into your guys' office. <laughs> I do commend you for not throwing in a ringer like baguette pod or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, I really wanted to, but I chose not to. Consomme. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It appears so what's everyone the, is what's the consensus here whatever you guys want to do no idea gladys with a w glad gladless yeah ladies kind of like gw l-a-d-y-s lady ladies i guess because it's french it would be guade but i don't i haven't taken a french class in like close to 10 years Look, I'm just going to go out on a, a limb here and tell you all the last four have all been the first choice. So I think the number one is a pretty solid guess. 
Okay, okay, that I'm convinced. <laughs> Counterpoint, did I read them out of order to make you think that? You tried to, but even when you did, you still slept up, slept up and said, <laughs> let me go back here because I've been taking notes, son. I want you to know <laughs> I got it all written down. So because you said spirit seekers first and you said, let me read the next one, but without reading spirit seekers again. So that already told me that spirit seekers was the second one. And I remembered it being the second one the first time hmm. you read. it. So anyway, it's number one. <laughs> Jesse's going full blown southern. Yeah, dude. Work. You want to yeah. math this real quick? This Hold is on. the Charlie Y'all, meme. You, exactly. <laughs> I was about to say this is. It's always sunny. This is me back here, unable to read, just trying to get through this board that I'm creating. Okay, so you're Don't saying Pepe Sylvia is the first one. But I mean, yeah. y'all go with whatever. That's that's the rantings of a man. I'm with you, Jesse. I'm with you. <laughs> So wait, Jesse says one, Pratik says three. I think so. I feel like I'm getting yeah. convinced by Jesse's logic. I, I might switch to one as well. Number one is Gwiladies, by the way, as well. So, I mean, it's if that sways you at all. I'm going to further sway. I'm going to further sway. Alyssa probably looked up Gwiladies, found it as a name, and then said, okay, I'm going to look up other French names. And Gladys was probably a fun one. And like, oh, oh, we're gonna put Gladys on and Genevieve, just to kind of throw this all off. I, I don't I, think Gladys is a name. I will say, yeah, I if you listened really closely, she did say the name. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Jim Appel, and then the name of the podcast. <laughs> so the name of the podcast was in the clip, and none of us speak French well enough to have noticed it. To be no. fair, I couldn't really hear anything. But yeah, can we get a replay? Ooh. No. You don't want to cover your eyes or <laughs> Alyssa? No. No. Okay. <laughs> she should have no. listened better. <laughs> I'm voting one. Let's do it. One. I'm with you. <clears throat> okay. Number one, ask well, ladies is correct. Yeah. Nice. Congrats, Jesse. Figured out the pattern. Yeah, look at there. Ooh. <laughs> Don't tell me there's a pattern. Expect me not to find it next time. <laughs> <laughs> this guy brought a pen. This guy me a once. pencil to class. Shame on me. <laughs> Pulled me twice, and he can't get fooled again. <laughs> that's that's the Pulled me three Texas times. Version. Don't. Don't do don't that do it. again. Just don't do it. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> I implore you, fine sir. Okay, so <laughs> here is our episode that this clip was from. It's from an episode entitled Assume Say On V. And here is our show description. I'm not going to read it in French. I've decided against it. That was enough French for one week for me. It's my fault. I watched a French movie two nights ago. So here it is translated into English. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Ask Ladies podcast. Here, I have the ambition to talk to you about personal development made in Gladys. Indeed, during my tribulations, I had to find ways to regain my smile thanks to the little things of everyday life. I do this either by applying certain advice I read or heard or quite simply by being inspired by what I observe or notice. Through this podcast, I'll offer you solutions that have helped me and I hope will help you too. So it sounds like ladies is a place, maybe? Could just be Google Translate being Google Translate there for a sec, but something in that made it sound like a location. As Gladys is a book, I think yes. from the 50s. And so I think it's, I think her name is, is the French version of Gladys. And it's mm. a similar vibe to that. Okay. That's a good point. I don't know. Is it a book? I thought it was a newspaper column. Maybe. If you have any French listeners, they are never going to listen again because they're so sick of hearing all of us stupid Americans <laughs> figure out anything about French culture. Yeah. So, someone somewhere is definitely just being like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> At any <Sure> rate. Regrets. <laughs> Actually, it's je désolé. Regret means you're regretful. Désolé means you're sorry. But I'm both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Say. Retweet. Whatever. So there you have it. I do like the artwork. I feel bad that we can't comment on the clip itself because none of us are fluent enough to have followed along with it. But hey, French self-help podcast. Who doesn't need one of those? You know, and it has good artwork too. So... With that out of the way, we have exhausted our clips for the day. Hope everyone who listened enjoyed it and keep sending in their submissions. And next week, Alyssa and I are going to have to not have a pattern 
let the pattern be the lack of a pattern. Or maybe I'm just bluffing right now. Who knows? Anyway, that's the end of our episode. I do hope everyone enjoyed it. So yeah, goodbye.